Well, it's a shade after 1031. Fitbit. That can mean only one thing. Life jackets. Miscellaneous stuff I need. Horns and whistles and all that. I put the gas tank in. I started it up one day, a couple days ago in my yard. We headed to the river for the first spin ever. Stand by. Well, you've been in this boat ramp before when me and Gig were diving, hooker rigging last summer. 10 bucks to put your boat overboard. Good gracious. Stand by. We're in the water. We got fire. Oh, you ready? I got some oars too. I gave you a story on the oars. Here's where luck came into play again. Sheer blind luck again. Got my little cushion over there. I got a boat full of crap and I ain't started no fishing gear yet. I'll fill you in on that too. Here we go. I'm not sure where I'm going to sit yet. I'm going to sit right back here today. No, I don't think I like it back here. I think I'm going to sit up here. Much better. Stand by as we head out of the creek. She's supposed to warm up for five minutes. These damn four stroke engines are different than the two strokes. When I was a kid, all we do is let them, we did have to break them in a little bit, but after that, it was wide open everywhere we went. This baby, you gotta let it warm up. You gotta run it for this speed and that speed for a little while, and that speed for this while for a little while, and so on and so forth. Big Parker going by. We're just going to ride around for about an hour, and then we're going back. The first time I've ever been off the trailer, I don't even know what the trailer looks like. But I am going to take the trailer in and get some new rollers put on it. If I don't put them on myself, I hadn't decided. That could have been me. Hobie. Mirage. Outside the bridge. There's the new bridge. The tire's coming in strong. We drifted out of gear now, just knocking along here. This was one of our favorite spots right here for catching speckles, certain times of the year. Up that way some, behind me about a mile, a half a mile, three quarters of a mile, all through here is good speckle trout fishing. Now, this boat has two sets of oar locks on it, one right there and one right here. I don't plan on drilling any holes in this boat. 
But what I am going to do, where this slot is right here, I'm going to have a, my buddy Eddie make me a board to go down in here. I may put one screw in there to hold it in place, but I don't think so. It'll be a snug fit. And then on top of that, I'm going to put a flat board. What I'm probably going to use is a piece of uh, cutting board. And I'm going to pin it with some rods into these rod holders so it can't go fore or aft any. It'll be wide enough where it'll be just outside of this rail right here. And I'll probably run it all the way back, maybe to the back. Starting, starting right along here somewhere and going back with it. That's where I'm going to mount all my gear. Rod holders, yak attack, do dad things. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So it'll be two uh, strips of plastic or mahogany or something. I don't know what I'm going to put on it, but be a board down in here to hold it in place, pinned in here through the rod holders with pins. I can just pack, take it out, and it's portable. Yeah, I can tack stuff all through here. Oh, Scotty, I need to decide. I'm pretty sure I, I kind of like this, the yak attack stuff. My buddy uh, Rick in South Carolina, he said that's nice stuff, that Optima, uh, some damn thing. I think it's Optima. Then I have to come up with some type of umbrella. That's a challenge. I guess I could come across there with a brace and drill a hole in it like I did before. I mean, like I was talking about. And stick the umbrella right in there. But then I have to figure some way to secure it to the floor so it don't go, you know, left or right or forwards and backwards. But my buddy Eddie, he's an engineer of many sorts. I'm sure him and I will, mostly him, will figure out how to do that. So that's where I'm planning on putting the umbrella. I got a pretty good size umbrella that I used to use when I was sharpening before I had a tent. And you know, some of y'all have seen it, and a lot of y'all have it. We're just drifting along here now. And the oars. Anyway, yes, let's get to the oars. These are nice oars. Six and a half foot. Feather brand. Connecticut, I think that says. Anyway, a buddy of mine named Jody. He's got a big 15-foot aluminum boat. And him and his son, Damon, they've been touring the United States in this boat. And I, I don't know if they've been to 36 states in this boat or they got 36 states left to go to. I don't remember. He told me, but I forgot which way it was. But anyway... He's got a bunch of oars. He said, man, I, you need oars. I got plenty of oars. I said, you do, huh? He brought me five oars. Two, two six and a half footers, uh, two fives, I think they are, and a paddle. But I got another plan for rowing. I'm not a, I've been rowing, you know, most of my life as a kid, but I got other plans. And I'll bring them in, into the fold later. So you'll have a better grip on what I plan on doing. Should work just fine. All right, I'll get back to you in a minute. Well, I've been rowing in, I'm gonna say 60 years since I've been rowing. And that could be the truth. It could be longer than that, I don't know. But at one time, that's how we got around. We rowed. And we rode before they had outboard motors. I'm not that old, but my daddy told me about it. So we're going to do a little rowing here. Six or six foot. Six foot is what you recommend. These are six and a half. But to get, you need length to get good rows. We're going with the tide now, so we're okay. <laughs> This baby row is good. It'll do something else good too when I get it. Should be in the mail today. I may not even have to do any modifications to it. It's up drilled two holes, which I hate.
Okay, so much for that adventure. What else was I going to tell you? I don't remember. It'll come to me though, stand by. If you went up this creek about four, let's see, one, two, maybe two or three miles is where my old family's farm was. In that days, they didn't have any outboard motors. And you rode from way up there to down here and through here to catch crabs on a trot line before to use crab pots. You rode down with the tide. You crabbed all day long. When the tide started in, you rode back up with your crabs and with the tide. This place is loaded with clams. I was going to take you clamming pretty soon. But I looked on the map, and there's no public clamming grounds in this whole river. It's all taken up by oysters. However, since I have lived here all my life, I know most of the oyster guys, they own the lease. So I think I can get permission to go on the oysters and dig some clams. Clams and fish. I let Gig catch the crabs. Okay, that's all. Stand by. The river splits right here. If you go to the right, you go into the western branch of the Lynn Haven River. If you stray straight up way, this is the eastern branch. It's a big river. It goes way, way up in there. We'll take you up there pretty soon. And you go straight ahead, you carry you right back to the bridge like we're headed now. And the boat ramp was over on the left-hand side. That's all you need to know for now. Right here is the Virginia Pilot base. These are the people that take pilots to the ships coming in and leaving the port of Hampton Roads. All conditions, all weather makes no difference. And the black boats up here to the left of the Maryland Pilot Association. The big brick building, the red one. They do the same thing. But all the ships go to Baltimore in the harbor, further up, Philadelphia in that area. But this is where they all catch them at the Cape Henry Point. They meet them and they turn left or right, depending on where they're headed. This is where I grew up at, right here. 42 years I spent my whole life right here, within 100 feet of where we are now. I sold them all that land that you saw, we just passed. Or my family, I sold it, but my family, I got it from my family. I swam so much in this river, I was a fish when I was a kid. Right here, Miss Danielle belongs to a buddy of mine named Manuel. She's a big, I don't know what kind of boat she is. She's big, though. Got two big V12 Detroit centers. Well, for 50 or 60 years, this used to be the spot called the Duck Inn. It was a restaurant that was open 24 hours a day. Then they made it bigger and they made it bigger and they used to have big parties here. If I can find the pictures, I'll show you what it used to look like in the 70s and 80s. That was a gazebo they built for the customers to have a good time on. Now this beach right here, we're outside the bridge now, you see, there's a bridge. This beach right here is loaded with speckle trout. Right where we are now, you cast towards the beach, you catch a devil out of them. And if you're on the beach, casting out, you catch the devil out of them. My buddy Eddie, you know, Eddie the new detector guy, Eddie Fisher, his daddy was a hot goose fisherman right here. He had an aluminum boat, he'd come out here in the morning since September and October and kill them. He worked both sides of the bridge, this side and the other side. I can see him right now in his aluminum skiff fishing. His name was Bubba. He had Bubba's Marina, which is now Bubba's Seafood. He sold it to a Greek, Greek guy named Dimitri, <coughs> who we won't discuss. But this was a, or is a hot spot right here. I see three guys fishing. There's a guy right there. You probably can't see him. He just walked away. 
and there's two guys on that bridge piling platform or whatever you want to call it. I haven't seen them catch anything. That's the reason I pulled up here. Just to watch them for a minute or two. See if they are catching anything. With the tide is flying, I'm just drifting along. Motor's not even here. We're drifting through the channel here. And this guy's got him a cast net. Man, I can't imagine. They just replenished all this. Matter of fact, they're replenishing it as we speak. They're down there on the other side of the pier now. There's the dredge way out there. Gig's been down there and Denny's been down there. Ain't been much happening as far as things. The dredge is pumping up on the beach, but we've been looking for something. There's a shipwreck right off there where the dredge is now. We were hoping it pumped up some artifacts, but the guy in the dredge said the only thing they're pumping up is fishing sinkers. Gray matter. Stand by. Hang a bait though. One, two, three, four, five. He's picking them up. You probably can't see him. Well, this is the east end of Gray Matter City. You went around there about a quarter of a mile is where Gray Matter City starts, where we come on the beach at. You see me hunt here before and find plenty of Gray Matter. And you can see why. Look at the people fishing. <laughs> they're steady fishing, they're steady losing Gray Matter. Just like depositors at the land of Nevada. So they're depositing the wrong thing. Gray Matter City. Some little eagles, yard eagles, I call them. You see them? I was just hoping to see somebody catch a damn fish or something, you know? Mm -hmm. I'll ask this guy if he's catching anything. Ten bucks and put your boat in the water. <laughs> God, I like to add a heart attack. If I had a nitroglycerin, I'd have taken two. When the lady told me, well, she didn't have to tell me. I saw a big damn sign when I pulled up. But she sure collected my ten bucks. This is where the Brock Environmental Center is right here. That's the creek we came down from the boat ramp. As a kid. We had a boat ramp before we had a restaurant. And right up this creek, about the third creek to the left, I used to catch minnows. I catch them in traps and I catch them in a net with a crab for bait. And I sold them for 25 cents a dozen. I should say my daddy would sell them before I got up because I like to sleep in. We, but for our boat ramp, we sold the devil out. With nothing to sell 10 or 15 or 20 dollars worth of minnows on a Saturday or a Sunday to people for bait. We had a big tank, we kept, I caught them and put them in this tank on the river and we dipped them out and sold them, about a dozen. Now they get, well, I don't know because I haven't bought any in a long time, but I know they gotta be expensive now if you were to buy them. But back in the 50s and 60s, I made a lot of money catching minnows. I'll take you back here one day and show you how I did it. I mean, it's not rocket scientists, but I sure made a lot of money at it. That's my buddy Jimmy Salmer right there. He runs one of these boats. Hold on a minute. One over lookout. from uh, Lookout, you know. You, yeah. you go back in one block. Because I live on Lookout down yeah. there. And I always see David, you know. Yeah. I always mess with him. Do we had that? Well, he's, the last time I seen him, he was headed down here. He had a bird in, bird in, the, uh, in the chimney or something. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> We just put chimney caps on for that reason. Is that right? I've had a duck in there. I've had two birds or two a crows. Squirrels, yeah. You got, you got a cage up there? I mean, you know, I like, do a, now, like yeah. a, a, you know, some kind of little fence. What kind of hands you got in this thing? Uh, one of them C uh, electronic cats. Oh. 454. 454. Damn. Yeah, oh, you know. How's the water going up in there? Is it still deep along the edge? Is it a jet boat. Is it a jet? Yeah, this is a jet. Tracking jet. 
Yeah, buddy, I can't can get see it for that platform. I can, I, I can get on up in there. What kind of time you make? It don't make it uh, maybe 16. Oh, that's okay. Something. But if they're not real efficient, I man, you go in shallow water. I can over here. Jump. I got all my junk, registration, telephone. That's my porta potty. If I need it. Life preservers in here, three of them. The package from West Marine. We're headed up the ramp now, I'm going home. Trailers don't look in too bad a shape. Got one roller. It rolls in a bow do that thing. The one little glitch is right here. I think I can eliminate that by getting a different hitch right there. I'll show you what it glitches. You see, it won't go by there. I would like to leave the doors open. And I can't open this door because it hits up here at the top. So I'm in a dilemma. Stand by. I might have to use two hands. <laughs> 